Colorado Trail, Kennebec Pass, Junction, a uh, Creek Trailhead, Durango. The map, sun shining bright in our eyes after what was an absolutely terrible uh, night of thunderstorms, rain, lightning, winds. Wow. Um, but of course, here we are the next morning. Sun is shining. All is well. Well, good morning, everybody. Jasper here. Welcome to the Colorado Trail. Day 31, August the 27th. It's a Friday. Yeah, bright sunshine. Whew. And it's just above the horizon of the mountain and shining right in my face. You can barely see anything ahead of you. Just a saturated air mass kind of glare. Whew. Yeah, crazy night of rain, thunderstorms. But like I said, we're here. Uh, last full day on trail. Um, we do have a pass to summit today. Um, and <clears throat> that will be the final summiting of the Colorado Trail. We're fairly high right now, but we are going to descend. Um, we're going from, oh, wherever we were, down to tomorrow, around 65, 6,600 feet in the town of Durango. And it's gonna be much hotter. Yeah, okay. Let's take a little bit of a look at the trail. We've changed directions a bit, so we're not pointing right in the sunshine. So the trail this morning, again, trees, grass, that kind of red clay, almost like the Georgia red clay soil. Uh, beautiful, and a beautiful morning. The sun, I can feel the heat in it already. It's early, although I did sit at camp this morning and have coffee and a three berry with apple kind of granola uh, cereal, again from Alpen Fair. Um, it's still quite thin up here. <laughs> so it's still fairly high, because I can feel it. But I've mentioned before, it's always worse on a morning. I don't know why. First hour or so, especially in the climbs. You're gasping for that air. And then you seem to settle down through the day, regardless of the elevation, even if you go higher. But on a morning, it seems to be much more of a challenge to get that air that you need. Okay, like I said, welcome to day 33, the last full day on trail. Tonight will be our last camp on trail. Speaking of camp on trail, fly sheet totally wet from the thunderstorms and rain last night. So down the road a little bit here, I'll be stopping to dry out my fly sheet and stuff. Uh, Cause I just don't like packing it away wet. It's just one of the worst, single most worst thing I think you can do for a fly sheet. It's just to compress it back in the uh, compression sack or stuff sack and whilst it's wet. I don't like doing it, but quite often you have no choice. Okay, hey, <laughs> let's get to hiking.
If you look southwest, uh, you'll see some smaller mountains uh, basically in the foreground. In the midground and the background, you see it's flat. We have gone from a scene like that, a flat scene at the eastern side of the Rocky Mountains, all the way across the Rocky Mountains to the western side, completely traversing, passing by, climbing and hiking the whole Colorado US Rockies. Huh. Our last um, of the de major descents, we do have another climb over one of those peaks, but it's at a, a lower level. I think it's around seven or eight thousand feet, maybe. Um, not the 12 and 13 that we've been accustomed to for the last five weeks. <laughs> a lot of descending today and tomorrow with that one major climb in the middle. Um, and you can already feel the power of the sun significantly warmer now um, as we get ever closer to Durango and the lower elevations. Rocks on this trail, treacherous. And <laughs> good night, Irene, uh, below. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. I think it's um, about time, a little earlier in the day than normal, but about time we gave our kind of gear review tech tip talk on equipment and gear. The final one of the Colorado Trail. Two little things I want to talk about, because I see this all the time. And um, one is, uh, I'll break it down into two kind of subjects. One again is footwear. Listen, just a couple of days ago, I was again online and I'm looking at the Bruce Trail uh, Facebook page and people are saying, what kind of hiking boots should I get? Um, well, the answer to that is none. <laughs> and people say, oh, I have these and they're waterproof. Uh, no. Um, believe me, folks, believe me. If you wear waterproof shoes, they will get wet. And when they get wet, they will stay wet. Just as they resist letting water in, they also resist letting water out. Now, I'm talking about the serious hiker here. I'm not talking about somebody that goes for a stroll down the trail for an hour on a Saturday afternoon in the middle of summer. I'm talking about somebody who's a little more serious. Uh, I'm a through hiker and I address a lot of hiking, weekend, section hike, through hiking kind of um, uh, subjects. And footwear is big on there. I have seen many, many, many on trails, different trails, people with hiking boots stopped dead, cannot go further. In the words of one man, my son's feet are like hamburger. Uh, you know who you are, skunk. <laughs> That's enough about that. Listen, take it from Jasper. Might not be for everyone, I understand. And footwear is personal, I understand. But there's a reason trail runners, first of all, are the number one footwear of through hikers. These are people that hike, well, over the Rocky Mountains, for instance. There's a number, there's a reason why they are number one trail runners. There's also a reason why, and you know what, while I'm chatting, I'm gonna show you the trail. There's a reason why Ultra Lone Peaks is the number one choice of trail runners. Well, there's lots out there, and there's lots very, very good. But the key thing, the key thing to, I believe, the Ultra is the wide, extra wide toe box. Uh, I, uh, so I just wanted to throw that out one more time the next time somebody goes out and says, oh, I'm buying a pair of waterproof shoes for the trail, 
okay, do that. But just know there's a lot better than that out there. Again, if you're a Saturday afternoon hiker, go out with the dog, go out with the kids for a couple hours, those shoes will do you just fine. But if you're a little more serious than that, and you actually want to log some miles, then you're simply barking up the wrong tree. Okay, secondly, oh, and that's the last time I'll mention that. Secondly, whatever gear you buy, at whatever it is, be it trekking poles, shoes, backpack, tent, uh, sleeping system, cook system, whatever, socks, whatever it is. Buy good quality gear. Do not make the same mistake I made when I first started by buying everything from discount stores, buying the cheapest. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I have now and then come across some great things. In fact, one of my favorite two summer sleeping bags came from Mountain Warehouse for 25 bucks. And I love that sleeping bag today. It is perfect. I'm not using it right now. Oh no, I would not do this trail. But for a weekend away in the summertime on trail, whatever, it's perfect. Um, so you can buy things inexpensively, but it's very, very, very difficult. It's very few and far between. If you're buying shoes, pay for them. If you're buying a shelter, pay for it. If you're buying a sleeping bag, pay for it. Do not buy the cheapest thing you can. Research, research everything. When you look at something and you think, I like this, I might buy these shoes, I might buy this backpack, I might buy this tent, okay. But don't buy it right then, go home. Put that information into YouTube, review, and see what other hikers have to say. See what people say that have been down that road in those shoes or have spent the night in the thunderstorm in that shelter or have tried to keep warm in that sleeping bag before you. Listen to the reviews. Believe me, you might think sometimes you're saving a few bucks. You're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for it with pain and suffering. I guarantee it every single time, almost every single time. My trekking poles, carbon fiber came from Amazon.com, like a hundred bucks. Hey, my friends, they're using two and $250 trekking poles. These ones are just as good and they're light and I like them. So you can find things, but believe me, generally speaking, do not buy a hundred dollar tent. Uh, do not buy a hundred dollar sleeping bag. They're not going to serve you well if you're serious and you log miles and you're out here day after day, week after week, month after month. This gear will not work for you. It's okay for the weekend. I had example, I had backpacks and tents from Mountain Warehouse. Hey, a British kind of entry level, uh, low priced chain of uh, out outfitters, outdoor gear. Now, none of those things that I bought were any good to a through hiker whatsoever, total waste of money. But on the other side of the coin, if you're a person that goes out for a weekend or two here and there, or a couple of nights here and there, the tent, the backpack, probably just fine for you. Okay, that is the final tech tip, gear review, advice on gear of the Colorado Trail. So I hope you got something out of those. By the way, if you have any questions on gear, please feel free to comment below. I love comments. I try to answer them as much as I can, which is pretty much always. Um, and do ask. Learn from people who have been down that path before you. That's what it's all about. I learn from people who have done these trails before me. Before I did the Bruce, I reviewed it big time. Before I did the Colorado, I must, must have watched every uh, YouTube video on the Colorado Trail that's out there. I knew a lot about the trail before I even started. Sure, there's been surprises, but there hasn't been too many. I knew what was coming. I knew about the weather, I knew about the cold, I knew about the hail, I knew about the mountaintops, all from the videos. So do review everything. Okay, <laughs> that's it, that's all.
the view from the final summiting on the Colorado Trail. Not as high as some have been, for sure. In fact, at a little over, well, somewhere around 9,700 feet, you start to look at things like this as nothing more than a big hill. Of course it's not, but look at the view. We're still well below tree line. The trail behind me, the trail ahead of me, as we then start our descent down to uh, the trailhead um, of Durango. Wow. Thunderstorms are building. There's rumbling in the distance. We're going to have another, uh, no doubt, uh, thunderstorm night, which is normal, typical. How the thunderstorms build in the afternoons here on the mountains. In the distance, the rumbling of thunder. There's some rain over there. Anyhow, just checking in. Is it beautiful? Or maybe we should just call it beautiful. I don't know. You hear the thunder? It's in the distance, but it's building. <laughs> okay, let's get to hiking. Had a little over uh, 10 miles, 10.1 miles maybe, um, to the uh, Durango Trailhead. For the best of my understanding is it's all pretty much uh, a descent from here, from about nine and a half thousand feet to about six and a half thousand feet. Um, we could actually finish this hike today. However, um, my hotel, motel, Motel 6 in Durango is booked for tomorrow. I have uh, certain things to get ready for um, my traveling back to Ontario, back home. I just did a kind of a final check on airline tickets just to see. And without any checked luggage, it's just under 800 Canadian to check my backpack and so on, I'm going to be looking at $850 Canadian just for the flight. Um, that's an awful lot. It does say the flights are high right now. That's an awful lot of money. Uh, so, I guess, um, and that's with Air Canada, so that was a direct flight. I didn't have a big, a lot of signal with, you know, at the time at the top of the mountains here. Um, and maybe tomorrow at the motel I will have Wi-Fi. Uh, but anyhow, a lot of money. Um, 850 bucks with a check bag. So it really does kind of look like it's going to be uh, the Greyhound. Uh, it's going to take a little longer. And you have to factor in their food over a couple of days. This kind of thing. Maybe even a motel in Niagara, uh, Niagara Falls, New York. However, um, the total load might be half of what it's going to cost to fly. So I just can't justify um, trying to get a flight at that price. It's, it's crazy. Um, it is possible tomorrow night the price will drop kind of last minute, but I'm doubting it. Um, anyhow, so that is just a little bit of an update on the travel arrangements. A little bit of a gear update. So, as you know, I've been using the Catadyne filter, uh, the Bee Free, on this particular hike. Oh, i got to watch those rocks. <laughs> well, when I was in Silverton, well, first of all, ever since I started using it, I have religiously, and to the best of my ability, cleaned the filter according to the manufacturer's specifications. There's two formats. There's a swish and a shake. Shake is using clean filtered water. Uh, in the actual bottle and shaking at a 45 degree angle vigorously for a, a significant period of time to get the debris, the filtered things, out of the filter and into that water where you can then discard it. The second one is the swish or the swoosh and that's where you fill a container, a tub of some kind, kitchen sink or whatever, with clear cool water and 
you shake it around in there vertically uh, so obviously the the second one isn't something you can do on trail you have to do that one when the swish when you're at say a motel or a hostel or something like that however I have used both techniques and I was very concerned with that filter arriving in Silverton which if you recall four days ago was our last resupply town but I did because I was at the hostel I did the 45 degree angle cleaning and the swish cleaning for at least 30 minutes and I did manage to get a slightly slightly better flow now when I say a slightly better flow um, I'll compare that to lesser than the Soya Mini so the slightly better flow was lesser than the Soya Mini and rather than buying a new one in Silverton which I could have for about 35 Canadian dollars I decided to go ahead and clean it yet again which I did for another 30 minutes pack it up and hit the trail the next day anyhow today the final day and quite possibly the final water filtering I'm not sure yet but quite possibly two and a half liters I filtered just a little while ago took me at least 30 minutes to filter that two and a half liters I am barely down to a dribble I am down to about oh a tenth or maybe an eighth of what the Soya Mini would give me so for those out there that are Soya fans or Soya users that use the Mini you'll know the Mini is not the fastest uh, filter in the world but my Catadyne has just totally and completely failed miserably uh, so I wanted to throw that out there it might be okay if you're going away for a weekend hiking and you know now and then but uh, for a through hike on this trail it it hasn't been like hard water on the on the when I say hard water I mean like really contaminated water a lot of this is mountain springs and it's not cow ponds that you're going to find on the Arizona for sure so there's no reason with a good cleaning regiment and the quality of water we've been filtering there's no reason why it should have done that and secondly secondly uh, if anyone from Catadine is actually watching this video right now this is the second one the first one I bought was terrible the second one I bought has failed me miserably on the Colorado trail through hike so when I get to Durango it'll be one of the first things that gets discarded to make my pack smaller and lighter for my traveling home it's unfortunate uh, so Catadine if you want to reach out to me trail name Jasper at gmail.com please do so um, but unfortunately uh, the way it stands right now I cannot give uh, the Catadine Be Free a reasonable review it's something I shall never spend money on again if Catadine wished to send me a replacement I'd gladly try it but I'd be extremely reluctant to have it as my primary water filtration source on a through hike hey just uh, my two cents worth things evolve as we use our equipment as we use our gear uh, things evolve and that's kind of the evolution of that Catadine Bee Free is it's in the garbage okay let's keep moseying I think only a couple of miles to go to when I'm going to make camp for tonight which will be about eight miles of descent tomorrow which will bring me into the trailhead you know what at a very very respectable and reasonable early hour before 10 a.m. I'll leave early so I get to camp early and relax a little bit it'll be a 15 mile day today thereabouts all is good okay I just <laughs> sent a message home to my wonderful girlfriend Joanne and trail angel Joanne and told her all is well and I noticed that my because I did get some uh, data uh, at the top of the mountain I noticed my bill for so far on this trail has come in at two hundred and fifty two dollars now my bill is normally sixty five so I've used this month let's say around 190 bucks or whatever of extra fees with roaming charges 
long distance calls out of the U.S. into Canada and so on. And you know what? On a shorter through hike like this one, where you, you know you're basically looking at a month, it looks okay. Bite the bullet and do that. But on a longer one, if you're doing the PCT, the Appalachian, the CDT, uh, what you'd actually want to do is pick yourself up if you have an unlocked phone. Pick yourself up a pay-as-you-go US card. I've met many guys doing that, and it's costing them about sixty-five dollars a month for data and uh, US talk and text. And it's the data you need to get in touch with hostels, motels, uh, and, and, and lots of other things if, that you may need um, on a through hike. But anyhow, there we go. We're moving right along. And um, we'll talk to you later, probably when we get to camp. The trail from today, a little easier day in so far as lower mileage. The trailer I'll be going down tomorrow morning. My camp. <clears throat> the final night out here um, promises to be peaceful, quiet, nestled amongst the bushes. Beautiful, quiet little spot for my tent. There's a little chair built out of stones here in the shade because it was quite hot earlier tonight the log where I had my dinner which was uh, mashed potatoes, baby bombel cheese and Lipton cup of soup. I had that primarily just to use up a, a Lipton cup of soup that I had left. I won't be needing the potatoes anymore. Um, yeah. Tomorrow. Tomorrow we have the final 8.9 miles of this trail. And at the end of that, we'll reach Durango and the end of the Colorado Trail through hike. Uh, get myself organized. Uh, for my two-day bus ride <laughs> back to Ontario, which is fine. It'll be nice to sit and relax, eat some fruit. Yeah, I'd, I'm looking forward to some fruit, some watermelon, cantaloupes, and that kind of thing. Just, you know, the fruit salad type stuffs. Things that I just can't get every day on the trail. Maybe some vegetables, carrots and stuff. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Hey, so far, ooh, I'm tired again, but so far... <laughs> Everything's gone just fine. Yeah. I'll talk to you guys in the morning. It's Jasper here. It's a little sad to be the last night on trail. It's very sad. Okay, I'll talk to you in the morning.